I'm Heidi Keith, and I live and work in Portland, Oregon. I've been a painter in, in Portland for about 25 years. I started painting even in high school and stuff like that, but I went to uh, Pacific Northwest College of Art and studied painting. I got my bachelor's degree from Portland State and then my master's degree from Portland State in art education, so I teach high school. And I had a career as a tattooer for about eight years. So art has always been a stable part of my life, but it's um, painting's been consistent throughout my life. And then I also am a high school teacher, and that is a very important part of my work as well. The content of my work is right now is a series about you know adolescence and pre-adolescence, and it's something I think about a lot, um, both from it had a big impact on me when I was that age, just, you know, the world is so intense and figuring it out how to be an adult. And then my interest in working with adolescents has been there since I was almost a teenager myself. So I worked in homeless services for teens and, and then probably I did that for about 10 years. And then I started combining art and education together and became a high school teacher. So, um, and I've done painting series of figurative watercolors on my students too. These particular paintings are family. So um, I have a whole slew of nephews and then I have two sons. So, and that is a big part of the content of my work right now too. I think the oldest one in this collection, I started just barely in 2021. So these are pretty new and each, and I work, you know, heavily in the summer and over breaks and a little bit during the school year, but um, I'm very busy with two kids and, and teaching. But one of the things about watercolor is it requires a lot of dry time. So you can't just hustle through a watercolor painting. So I often will have two or three in progress at the same time and return back to them. It's a, it's a real test of patience. It's a very um, slow, methodical process, for sure. So with watercolor, at least the way I work, there's you know multiple approaches to watercolor, but I use a lot of washes. So it's when you make a large section of clear, you know, just empty water, no pigment, and then you slowly drop the pigment in, and it will bleed in ways that you have some control over, but mostly not. Um, so there's like an unpredictability to it that I really like at this point in my life. I think it would have been really hard for me to work with watercolor as like a teenager, early 20s. Like I just wanted that instant gratification of like a heavy bodied paint, like oil or acrylic. You know, you put it on, it stays where you put it, and then you can like, you know, scratch at it and create all this cool history with it. Um, and heavy bodied paint is beautiful and amazing, but it, it can be challenging in other ways, like health. Um, so I, I was a painter using mostly oil paint for a long time, and it's gorgeous, but it is um, really difficult with the vapor, and you can ventilate a studio properly, and certainly there's really good products on the market. Um, but I just, get, managing the chemicals was more than I wanted to deal with, but also environmentally watercolor is, is, is lovely and low impact. And I like the ephemeral quality of paper. Like paper is, you know, I know that it will degrade over time, over my lifetime to some degree in a way that an oil painting won't, but I kind of like that. I like the, the fact, especially the fact that I'm like painting bodies, you know, and they're ephemeral too. And I don't know, I appreciate it. And I think just environmentally, it's nice to know that something won't out, outlast me by thousands of years. Particularly when I was using acrylic, you know, you're literally painting with plastic. And I think like just my own environmental anxiety got the best of me and really used to help me start to appreciate watercolor. My students also helped me to appreciate watercolor because I was assigned to a class to teach watercolor. And it didn't really speak to me at first. I think there's a lot of prejudices against watercolor. We all picture like, you know, elderly people painting flowers, which is great. There's nothing wrong with elderly people painting flowers, but that it, and it, it's a lovely venue for that, but it's, there's so much you can do with watercolor over any um, level of artwork, contemporary or traditional. And there's just this beautiful translucency to it. And 
I think there is something to the patience of it, which is maybe why it speaks to older folks, is because it requires a great deal of stillness and patience. But I see teenagers use it, and they do a beautiful job. And I think it, like, it's a great teacher of patience as well. And after my students use watercolor for a long time, they actually prefer it to acrylic and, and oil. And I think there's also that environmental aspect for them, too. They consider that as well. So all of these paintings are monochromatic. And I usually use uh, cobalt and um, a, a, like a dark burnt, burnt sienna, burnt uh, umber. And that's pretty much all, the only thing on my palette. And, it's, and I've kind of vacillated between that and more of like an achromatic, just you know, very black and white. And I also really like that. I feel like the, the mood is really different when I use black and white versus like a brown and soft sepia and white. Um, I think I'm drawn to it because it, it definitely sort of freezes everything in a moment. And I am working for photography, which is also a very static, you know, freezing of a moment. And so I think I'm just sort of amplifying that a little bit. And I think adolescence is, is, a, is a challenging thing to address because I think it's important to, you know, acknowledge it and, and analyze it, but not celebrate it to this extreme that our culture does. It's, I, I think our, our obsession with youth is, is disturbing to some degree um, because it's a hard time in life. And I think we, we put a lot on kids. We put a lot on kids, both, um, you know, positive and negative. And I think it's really just a stage of life that we all go through. And... And I'm, I'm interested in like depicting older folks too. And I think, but my life is so geared towards young people right now, just thinking about all of these developmental stages. And for me, like my own adolescence is so frozen in time. And so I, I, it's all, it's all, it's not maybe totally resolved in my mind, but I think a lot about like that frozen moment in like thinking back on our adolescence, it's snapshots, you know, we all, have snapshots of, of these moments in our lives and like these important turning points. And um, yeah, it's kind of what I think of when I think of this palette. But I also love that it kind of equalizes everything. Everything's sort of equally important. There's, you know, not this highlight color. And uh, in, in my, more, my more recent ones, the ones that deal with water in the background, the water and the figure are equally handled. Like I am as interested in the water as I am the figure. And so it's kind of a neat way to sort of um, not push the background into the background. But. This was the first painting in this series. And it's of my older son, who is like right on the, the cusp of adolescence. And he's, he's a definitely someone I love to paint, and he likes to be painted. He's an artist too, like, and, you know, I love this, like, really high contrast, bright sunlight kind of um, moment. So the, this moment right here, like this whole section, this is what I was referring to as the wash. So all of that is painted all at the same time, just with water. And then the pigment is dropped in right around here, and then it bleeds, and sometimes, it's a real disappointment and sometimes it's super exciting and I was really happy with the way it panned out here. Kind of trusting it and creative risk taking are a huge part of watercolor and just experimenting enough in kind of low consequence ways until you can sort of predict what's going to happen but you know there's so many variables between the you know how much water you use or the the aridness of the day um, or of course the paper quality there's different watercolor papers some absorb really quick some hold the water out on the paper longer i'm very nerdy about materials i could talk about paper all day um, and then here uh you know this is i'm using something called frisket so you paint with a rubber it's like almost picture rubber cement and then you know you paint in anything you want to be resisted and then you can do washes over top of it and it allows the paper to be retained underneath so that's kind of a fun tool to play with as well this one is titled dusk and it's based on this really special place that we go every year it's out in the cascade lakes wilderness area 
and a very large group of family. And all of these three people are all just about teenagers and they do a lot of wild <laughs> um, hiking and rock climbing together. And this is just a moment from that. The rocks are painted using washes and sea salt. So you drop sea salt in and it crystallizes. So it's kind of a fun technique. Everything else is just handled using washes and dropping the pigment in locally. I, the more of these that I do, I feel like all of the more recent ones have all included water. Like water's been its own content, which is like very meta, water, water content. <laughs> <laughs> like um, the, the one on the far left over there, that's like a newer piece. And then the two that I'm doing right now at home, both have a huge section of just water being depicted, yeah. So I think that's like something I'm interested in and kind of drawn towards perfusing more, but. Well, I don't think people recognize how hard that is. I mean, if you look at this and you pop that <laughs> up above his feet, would you know whether it's clouds or water? And I think yeah. realistically people would say, this is water. Like that looks like water, not clouds. Yeah. And I think that you did splendidly with that. Thanks. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways. So this is the time that I like to give you the opportunity to thank anybody in your life. Dads, kids for posing, yeah. and um, give a shout out. Well, I, it's a conversation that I have on a daily basis with my students too. And we do a lot of life drawing and we talk a lot about the difference between drawing symbolically from your mind versus like observationally from the world. And of course, both are wonderful, but I think there's a big power in trying to be more observant um, and then articulate it through our own lens. We're not cameras. We're not meant to be cameras. Like I think the human hand and the interpretation through, um, through that is really powerful, demonstrating the human condition and our own experiences. Um, and whether that comes out in an abstraction or representationally, I think it doesn't really matter. But uh, I think that our, our world is, we spend very, very little time actually observing. And even artists who go to museums, apparently it's like 12 seconds we spend looking at actual pieces of art. And that's an audience that is like geared towards that. So I think the rest of the world like could benefit from that observational study. Um, and then another thing that keeps coming up in conversation with my students is the idea of like machine learning and AI and like how, you know, will art even matter? Will art even exist? And we talk about that there's no way to have that sort of human condition and like the errors that come through beautifully and something like watercolor or pottery are what make it beautiful. And will that be a factor, you know? Um, when art is just something we consume and no longer make. I, I don't know, it's a big question, <laughs> but those kind of ideas come up for me when I think about why art matters. But. I think all of the amazing young people in my life, um, certainly my own children, are amazing inspiration and both and being my models, but also being patient with me. And, um, you know, I think being an artist child is multifaceted, good and bad, and has a lot, you know, a lot to it. But they are also fantastic artists in their own right. And it's really neat to see them develop as well. And then my students, of course, um, constant inspiration and both also as like a creative engine for me to try to bring that to them.